much of this huge move today was a gigantic short squeeze. You got to understand so much of today's rally took place on the backs of hedge funds who were poorly positioned going into the sell off on Friday. Sell, 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 so sell. they overcompensated by shorting anything related to the coronavirus right into the teeth of the downturn. They took place, <laughs> those sales, in the midst of panic. Now, the short sellers didn't count on China pouring $71 billion into the financial system today, on top of more than $170 billion yesterday, all in order to prop up asset prices, which then rippled around the world. More importantly, though, they didn't imagine that there might not be any sellers, real sellers to speak of. Instead, we really only had sellers of the S&P futures, and they stopped once we got a sense that the Chinese have gotten the situation, uh, I guess I could say, under control. It looks like China will be back to work next week, and that's huge. Without the pressure from the S&P futures, there just wasn't much actual stock for sale, as opposed to short-sold stock. Let me give you some examples. Let's say you bet against the casino stocks with lots of Macau exposure, like Wynn and Las Vegas Sands, wagering that they'd have to shut themselves down in the face of this outbreak. Rational, right? But do you know anyone who made that bet was right that the casinos would shut down? There was just one problem. It didn't seem to hurt the stocks. When the longs, the current shareholders, saw the news, they didn't freak out like the short sellers needed it. Many of those owners, by the way, are index funds, and they never sell anyway. Others probably think the worst is over. They looked through the gulf. Either way, it's extraordinary that something bad happened to these Macau gambling names, and there was a shortage of major sellers. That's new. Or take Nike. Now, here's one that seemed like an obvious loser from the coronavirus epidemic. China's one of Nike's largest suppliers, also a fabulous market for them. If the Chinese economy is in trouble, shorting Nike should have been like shooting fish in a barrel, right? I mean, talk about an obvious short. Then you come in Monday and the stock gets not one, but two upgrades. Then you find out that new CEO John Donahoe, late of ServiceNow fame, is coming in to speak to large accounts this week. He's also going on camera with us to explain what's happening in China, I'm sure, and what's happening around the globe. Uh, but mostly, I think about the rise of personalization and how Nike's huge technological edge is crushing everybody. The virus? Eh, a good short spoiled. Consider Ralph Lauren. The apparel space had been one of the best shorts in this market. Sell, 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 sell. Coles, sell, sell, Macy's. Sell. Macy's got a big meeting tomorrow. Better go well. Target, they've all been weak. Then PVH reported a good quarter. Nobody cared. So shorting Ralph Lauren, talk about a layup. Nope. CEO Patrice Louvet has reinvented the business, selling more product over the Internet, especially via Instagram and the, uh, belo- the uh, forlorn snap this evening. What was once a drawback, Lauren's lack of China exposure, well, it's become a virtue. It's a virtue. They don't have a lot of China exposure. The company reported a fantastic number this morning. The stock surged 9%. What they called their elevated brands having terrific sell-through. I was quite impressed. Okay, then there's one. You know, look at this. I mean, this thing is still trading like a wild man. Clorox! Many analysts have an underperformer or sell rating on the stock. Yeah, sell. Can you imagine with Clorox? With Ben O'Dora? I mean, what are they thinking? But there's a lot of shorts in it. When the shorts see, see uh, that, that there's a lot of sells and underperforms around Wall Street, they figure they got a nice loser on their hands. And Clorox hasn't had the best track record of late. Oh, but not this time. Not this time. The company delivers a better than expected quarter. Its stock jumps 5%. The shorts scalded. Finally, there's the electric elephant in the room. Yes, of course. I have mentioned it in 30 seconds. Tesla, which just keeps flying and flying and flying. It, this thing is supernatural, frankly. It is. It's not of this world. Up another 14% today. Ever since Tesla reported a profit two quarters ago, busting the bear thesis, it's been a short seller's worst nightmare. By the way, Jimmy Chill nailed this thing about 600 points ago. But people were thinking, oh, he's late. 600 points. Let me tell you, chill is chill. Remember, when you short something, you need to borrow the stock before you can sell it to someone else. But with Tesla, there's been a shortage of stock to find. There's so many short sellers. So when you hear a legendary guy like Rod Barrett on Squawk this box this morning. He's championed this thing from the get-go, and he uses a trillion-dollar target. Well, you better believe you're going to get a classic short squeeze where the brokers have no choice but to close out your position. And this is what's known as a buy-in. And it's happening every day in Tesla. You can tell because the stock's up really big before the market opens. That's the brokers buying it in. The shorts will keep getting squeezed out until some natural sellers finally surface. They haven't appeared yet. Even up here at $887. It's an increase of 107 points 
although it did trade to 968 intraday. Where are all these short sellers coming from? Okay. Lots of hedge funds like to have short positions as a hedge against their longs. They like to run a neutral book, okay? They've dedicated short money. It means they have to have some shorts. And that's where the real damage is being done. The shorts are getting annihilated because they have to have shorts, and now there's, they've become rocket fuel for the market. They are desperate for something bad to happen, anything. You know what? Now they're just doing They just need panic. They're hoping you will panic. But you know better. The natural sellers from last Friday... Suddenly, they're nowhere to be found. Stick with Craig. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.